Hey, Dr. David Clark here. In this video, let's talk about how stress triggers Hashimoto's. All right, to get started, everybody knows by now, I'm sure, that Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid condition. And everyone always wants to know, well, how did I get this thing, right? Like, how did it start? Well, kind of current knowledge thinks there's a couple different ingredients for how you get an autoimmune disease like Hashimoto's. Number one, you typically have to have some sort of genetic predisposition. Now, that being said, you could still have Hashimoto's uh, without having a genetic predisposition. I, I kind of call that acquired Hashimoto's, and that can happen if you have certain infections that cross-react with the thyroid peroxidase inside the thyroid gland. I have made some videos on how infections can trigger uh, Hashimoto's. That's what we're talking about. Uh, theoretically, foods can do that as well, but most of the time there's a genetic predisposition, right? Uh, and then you have to have some kind of, uh, you know, barrier breakdown, uh, be it the gut epithelial barrier, you know, like the thing that lines your gut, uh, or your lung barrier, or even your blood-brain barrier, or your sinus blood barrier. Uh, a breakdown of one of those barriers is another ingredient. Uh, and then you have to have some kind of triggering event. Now, a triggering event could be infection. Uh, it could be uh, a physical trauma. It could be a food exposure. And that kind of trigger thing feeds into what I'm talking about today, which is how stress triggers Hashimoto's, right? So what you have to realize is stress comes in different flavors, right? There's physical stress. There's emotional stress. There's even what we call like chemical stress. But all stress provokes an inflammatory immune system response. And that's really the key how stress triggers Hashimoto's. So let's say that you've got uh, a genetic predisposition to Hashimoto's, right? Maybe your mom has it, maybe your sister has it, maybe an aunt has it, or maybe they've got different autoimmune conditions. But there's a genetic little predisposition to autoimmunity. Well, in an inflammatory environment, the genes that make us have these autoimmune problems, they can turn on. And stress is a great way to create an inflammatory environment. So one of the things that we know is that stress can produce something called sterile inflammation. Now what that's meaning is that there is inflammation present, the immune system is responding and all these different cascades are happening, but there's no bug, there's no infection, or there's no tissue damage. It's sterile. I hope that makes sense. But it doesn't really matter because inflammation is inflammation, whether it's being caused by a car wreck, a head injury, uh, a divorce, it doesn't matter. The immune system responds with the same sort of cascades and the same sort of uh, patterns. And that inflammation is what can create an environment that is enough to tip those genes over that are the autoimmune genes uh, into expressing themselves. And then we start to have these full-blown autoimmune problems. Now, another way it can do it, just to kind of dig a little bit deeper, is through something called heat shock protein number 60. Uh, and that is triggered as a, res in a re as a response to a lot of different types of conditions. It's kind of a, a mimic of thyroid peroxidase. So here's how it works. Uh, it is a mitochondrial protein. It's involved in stress responses, uh, diabetes, all kinds of things. But it is very structurally similar to thyroid peroxidase, which is inside the thyroid gland, and thyroglobulin, which is inside the thyroid gland. Now, if you remember, when we test someone to see if they have Hashimoto's, the two tests we do are antibody tests for thyroid peroxidase antibodies and thyroglobulin antibodies. So a stress response, no matter what's causing it, you can make a lot of heat shock protein and it is a mimic for thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin. So the immune system can get involved and there can be some cross reaction between the two. All right. Um, another way that this sort of uh, uh, triggering happens due to stress is basically through uh, something called interleukin-1, and interleukin-1 is a cytokine. It's an immune system messenger, and you know we all have it, and it is just part of your immune system response. And interleukin-1, though, will cause breakdown and opening of those barriers I mentioned. So we've got a gut barrier, we've got a blood-brain barrier, and we know very clearly that interleukin-1 can just open those guys up. Now, why does that matter? Well, because the barriers, if you can imagine them being like, a, like a, the, the Great Wall of China, right? It's supposed to keep certain things out, right? And that's where your gut barrier is. And so if you all of a sudden now just have a really leaky barrier, things can come through that barrier that don't normally come through that. And sitting right on the other side of that barrier is your immune system. 
So your immune system get very reactive, uh, very sort of turned on, and next thing you know, you've got triggering of your autoimmune problem. Um, and that's like a real crash course in that. So stress triggers Hashimoto's basically through being inflammatory. And I gave you a couple little smaller details about heat shock protein uh, and interleukin-1. But here's the thing. Uh, how would you even know that this is happening to you? Well, if you've developed low thyroid symptoms like hair loss, weight gain, joint and muscle pain, uh, you're kind of losing your hair, you've uh, developed insomnia, developed, uh, you know, constipation, brain fog, okay? That are, those are kind of classic low thyroid symptoms that could be from Hashimoto's. So you need to make sure you're getting tested appropriately. I got a lot of other videos on those topics, so you can kind of educate yourself on that. Uh, but the thing is, don't let someone tell you that stress uh, isn't important, that stress can't kill you, that stress can't create an autoimmune problem, because it can, and it definitely can in Hashimoto's. So stress is inflammatory. That's the takeaway for today.